Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Clebo, and we are back in Pokemon Scarlet. Now, when we last left our lovely Clebo, we had reached Mesogosa. We were having a wander around all the different uh, wonderful places around Mesogosa, seeing what there is available, and we fought Team Star. So uh, today we are taking on the stairs as we already have started. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you do, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and uh, press that navigation bell. So please do as, uh, yeah, love to see more of you joining the party. So please do. But anyway, we are going to get right into this. And uh, I think we're going to uh, head into the school and uh, do a few lessons. So yes, I know uh, I mentioned that. Oh, all that schoolwork is one of my options as uh, dialogue earlier, but we are actually going to do a load of lessons and all that. Now, I do feel like my audio is slightly out of sync at the moment, which uh, might have a, might be an issue, but hey ho. Let's see how we get on. Heal ball. Hmm. So, yep, yeah, just running around, exploring, seeing what's available. I think there's some technical difficulties with the uh, the audio in this episode, and potentially there's going to be some technical difficulties in the audio for many episodes to come. Um, just because, for some reason, my capture decided to not work properly. So, I do apologise if uh, the audio doesn't quite add up to uh, what you're seeing on screen. So, it is what it is, I suppose. We'll have to make do. Because I recorded so much footage, and yeah, not great. But anyway, let's head inside. Here we are, Clever. Welcome to the Naranja Academy. The Naranja Academy. This here is the entrance hall. You can sign up for all kinds of classes at the desk behind you, and those halls off to the sides lead up to different parts of the school. It's totally big enough to let loose some battle in here, but for some reason they banned Pokemon battling at the main entrance. I wonder why. Ah, oh, Master Clubber, Miss Nimona. How did you find your first school commute? We had a blast. I imagine Miss Nimona's high spirits helped with that. She's a true asset to our fine academy. Not that I was expecting any less from our champion ranked student council president. Reliable as ever, Miss Nimona. Well, I know how to look after a people. Oh, but speaking of which, we saw some of those Team Star kids in town director. Did well. It was down the stairs from the front gates. They were hassling this kid. It is quite the news. Are they still to be found out there? Actually, can I flex them off on them and run them off? You don't say. Of course, it's a fine thing to try and help a fellow student, Master Clubbo. But you might wish to show a bit of restraint as you find your feet here at our academy. And Miss Nimona, do remember that school staff here is, is here to resolve any such troubles. So yeah, the audio is definitely not uh, not quite matching up. So we clearly have some technical difficulties there, so I do apologise about that. Oh, 
Uh, right. Yes, sir, director. A child with an Eevee backpack, you say? I suppose that might have been Miss Penny. I'm relieved to hear that she's come to class at least. Oh, and Miss Nimona, if you'd be so good to report to Mr. Jacques about this Team Star business. As your homeroom teacher, he should be kept appraised, apprised of all such goings on. You've got it, sir. Ah, oh, but look at the time. You should better hurry along. Classes will be starting soon. We're in class 1A, Clever. Come on, I'll show you the way. Alright then. So we have more lovely little technical issues. Good morning, Mr. Jacques. Hello, hello everyone! We have some exciting news this morning. Who wants to hear it? Oh, oh me! I want to hear the news. I suppose you I should have told you sooner, but we have a new little friend joining our happy homeroom as of today. Whisper, whisper, whisper! I wonder what they'll be like. Alright, come on in! Could I trouble you for a few words of introducing yourself? Sure, I'm clever. All right, I'm clever. Indeed I am. So calm and collected, he's pretty cool. Looks like everyone's eager to get to know you, Clevo. All right then, who wants to be the first to ask our new friend a question? Me, me, can I ask a question? What's your favorite thing about Pokemon? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I think I like everything about Pokemon. And eventually we'll select that option, yes. There we go. Really? Awesome! I'm totally the same. Does anyone else have a question for their new classmate? Me! I have a question. You went all the trouble to have been rolling here, so spill clutter. What you hope to get out of it? You must have some kind of dream, right? I want to complete the Pokedex. I want to become a stronger trainer. I don't actually know. I want to complete the Pokedex, because I am a collector. Well, thank you for telling us a bit about yourself, Clever. I'm Mr. Jacques. I teach biology here in the academy. I'm also your homeroom teacher. That's your seat. Second row from the front. I don't know what this accent is. I don't even know what this voice is. I'm just... Yeah, whatever. Alright, you ragamuffins, be nice and friendly. Okay. We will, Mr. Jacques. He probably should be French, but I can't do a French accent to save my life, so I'm not even going to try. Get to know the Academy campus by exploring a bit on your own. Welcome to the Academy. Yeah, new kid. Glad to have you. Hello, uh, you want to talk to me? When class is in session, we tend to be on our best behaviour, but our best still isn't good. Thanks for answering my question, Alia. Look for Nimona. She's probably got caught to the staff. Mm, okay. So we'll have a little run round, and now we'll leave. You can now move around the school. Try checking out places on the map where you see that. When you see that someone might be hanging around, perhaps you'll discover something. Now choose a location and start exploring. So we have the cafeteria, we have the staff room, and we're in class 1A already. So we'll head to the cafeteria then, shall we? Does it look like uh, Arvin is there? Yep, there he is. So we've got some kids eating. We'll go speak to Arvin, see what he's up to. Oh hey, so we meet again. Remember Reed, right? Oh, from the lighthouse. Yeah, exactly. That's my little know-it-all buddy. Got to mind a, a steel trap? Like a steel trap, eh? No need to tell me your name. Club, all right. Whole school seems to be talking about you. The new kid who showed up with the president of the student council. I normally wouldn't even bother showing up for class, but I came all 
the way to school today just to talk with you. You gotta help me out so I can finally make my dream a reality. What's this dream first? <laughs> Caught your interest, have I? You want to hear all about it? Well, this might come as a surprise, but the fact is, I'm all about a picnic life, the great outdoors. The perfectly prepared sandwiches, all of it. Not half bad co cooking either. Right now I'm researching new recipes that will help Pokemon feel better. Real food, see? I found this book the other day and it had a section about these. Herba Mystica things. Basically there's some kind of special herbs that heal up any Pokemon as soon as it eats them. Now, there's a total of five different types of Herba Mystica, based on what I read. Just talk. Taking a little lick out of them once they've been powdered will get your blood flowing, provide nutrients, prevent aging, it'll even boost the immune system. These herbs seem like they're a real deal, only found here in Paldea, and rare to boot. But this book says they're all guarded by Titan Pokemon, meaning it's going to be pretty tough to try and grab a few spooks. Because see, Titans are, well I think, they've got to be things like this. Monsters of Area Zero. As we descended further into the Area Zero, we began catching glimpses of mysterious Pokémon. Hmm. Very mysterious. A member of the survey team captured this photograph by chance. I noticed passing resemblance to the Pokémon known as Donphan. Yet differences such as its sheer size and the shape of its back set it apart, as it does do its great tusks. I really want to get those herbs for myself, but I'm not very good at Pokemon battles. You don't say! Don't have any friends with strong Pokemon to lend me a hand either. And I'd never hear the end of it if I went crawling into that student council girl. But here you what's up! You've got to help me out with this. You'd be perfect! Um, no, because you, you were not very nice to me, so I'm not going to be nice to you. Nope, wait! I don't need an answer yet. I'll just register the places where it seems you might find might be Titans in your map pack for you. Okay. So now we have five Titans we can potentially go take on. Mm -hmm. At some point we'll have to do that then, won't we? Let it stew a bit. And we can get more into the details later. In the meantime, take this! Whatever this is going to be. When you're ready, Clubber, we will uh, take whatever he's offering to us, I suppose. Um, Clubber! We shall be right back. A few moments later. And we're back, right. I'll take this little gift for listening and all. You obtained a bag of stardust. Ooh, nice. So yeah, the, the entirety of this audio has absolutely been messed up. So something went wrong in the capture. So at this point I am actually going to mute my audio because I think it's just going to be better. And we'll uh, replace it with some lovely music from the ages of Pokemon. So, be uh, a quiz and you can guess how many, uh, guess which game it's from, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, but uh, we'll carry on with this, so. And, uh, make do with what we've got. But I hope your studies are going okay. We can eat more sandwiches. Mm. Uh, pickle sandwiches, egg sandwiches, potato salad sandwiches, fire alarm sandwich. Interesting. This is fruit, right? I've been told there are Pokemon that camouflage themselves as fruit. Mm -hmm. When Rotom enters a microwave, it turns into a heat Rotom. I heard it even changes type. Yeah, Rotom can change its type all the time. Oh, to -do -do -do. So, that is supposed to be a uh, telephone. So, this is clever, right? I hacked your smartphone so I could talk to you. Hope you don't mind. What do you mean, hacked? As far as you're concerned, it means I'm basically in control of your phone right now. My name is Cassiopeia. But never mind that, it's you I want to talk about. I hear you're a trainer with serious potential. 
that description is accurate, there's something I'd like to ask you. Tell me, Clement. You know about Team Star, right? Yes, of course. Great, I appreciate you being up front here. Team Star is a group of troublemakers formed by some academy students a while back. They cause headaches for the school and try to bring other students down to their level. And I refuse to sit idly by and let them get away with it. So I've come up with a plan to bring down Team Star and force them to disband for good. I call it Operation Starfall. But I'll need allies to carry out this operation and I'd like you to be one of them. I'm um, sure, why not? No need to reply right this second, we can discuss the details some other time. Till then, I'll leave you to it. Bye! Well, that was strange. Ah, oh, Master Clever. Please do try and keep your voice down if you're making calls within the school, won't you? I'll be more careful. We don't want anyone else overhearing any personal information after all. Honestly, there are so many things we need to be careful about this day and age. On you go, then, young man. You ain't wrong. Even in real life, you, you should be very careful with the conversations out in the public. You never know who's listening in. Team Star, you say? Mm. So, that's that done there. So we're back in the hallway. And, uh now we can start taking some classes. So we've got biology, math and battle studies. Now it's math because of course it's American but it should be maths. Because we do multiple maths, we don't just do one math, we do maths. So yeah, maths is the correct one. But here's Mr. Jacques again. Hello, hello, my name's Jacques, and I'll be your Pokemon biology teacher. In my class, we'll learn, all learn about various quirks of our beloved Pokemon together. I hope you'll all come to love Pokemon even more from the things that you learn. In today's class, I'll teach you a great way to get to know your Pokemon in more depth. If you'd like to become better friends with your Pokemon, you can let them come out of their Pokeballs and walk around with you. Sounds great, huh? You can use the ZR button to throw a Pokeball and let out a Pokemon inside. Nothing cuter than watching your Pokemon run around underfoot to us, if you ask me. Once I don't, you let your Pokemon out, try to speak with them. It's a great way to get to know them better. Okie dokie, Mr. Jacques. However, letting your Pokemon out of its ball isn't such a great idea in some locations. Can anyone tell me where it is that you shouldn't have your Pokemon walk along with you? Uh, inside buildings. In my guess. That's right! Great job, Clubbo! I see you did your homework. The correct answer is that we should not walk with our Pokemon in buildings. Some Pokemon might damage walls, desks, and other things walking around inside buildings, so it's not allowed regardless of the species. Therefore, please only let your Pokemon out of their Pokeballs while outdoors. Okay, everyone? Yeah, we saw Fletchlings up in the Academy entrance, and there was Pokemon out and about anyway, so... How, how does that work? I don't get it. Oh, I almost forgot. Keep in mind that you can only walk together in with your lead Pokémon. Remember, use the ZR button to throw a ball and let out the Pokémon inside. You also want to remember that throwing a ball as a wild Pokémon will start a battle. Looks like that's all the time we have for today, so see you all next class. Alright, Mr. Jacques, goodbye. Oh, where do we want to go? I think we'll do some more classes, I think. So, at this point, yeah, I just go ahead and practically do every class that we have available. So we'll now go meet Miss Time in maths class. Class will begin shortly, don't be tardy. I won't, it just takes me straight there, so you can't really be tardy. And here's Miss Time. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. My name's Time, and I'll be your math teacher. Maths. It's maths, not math. Sorry to put you all on the spot, but let me ask you a quick question. Do you enjoy... Maths, sort of. Um, yes, maybe. 
Thank you for being for your honest up responses. Some of you may like numbers and some of you may not. I like to make something, I don't know. But no matter your opinion on maths, blah 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 blah. Speaking of which, you are you all caught up on your studies. For example, grass is strong against water, and water is strong against fire, correct? Clever, you seem to be good with Pokemon, so let me ask you this. Bearing in mind that water is strong against fire, if a move water gun hits a fire Pokemon, what becomes of the move's damage? Does it cut in half? It doesn't change, it's doubled. Of course it's doubled. That's right, I knew I could carry on you for this question. Using moves of a type that your opponent is weak to, super effective. It multiplies the damage to the moves by two. On the other hand, using a move of a type that's resistant and isn't very effective, it halves the damage. So you have to remember that. Then there's battle studies, of course, but I won't be best to use the this is a lively topic. They can make maths very fun, even for those of you who don't much like the subject, don't you think? Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you look forward to it. I mean, we can try. I mean, it's going to be battle studies, so I'm sure it'll be fun. So we take now, we'll take on Battle Studies. You got Battle Studies with Ms. Denver? Yes. Please. Class will begin soon, don't be tardy. I mean, again, I can't really be tardy. Could you just take me straight there? So say hello to your battle instructor, the one, the only, the hot-blooded, so and Dendra. Osu is a karate thing. My name, age 25, my hobby, working out, my type, well... Strong and muscular fighting types, of course. That's all for my introduction. As for my class, this is where you'll get to learn the nitty-gritty of Pokemon battling. We'll start with the basics, that's so no trainer gets left in the dust, even if you're new to this stuff. Have no fear. Leave it to me and my muscles and you'll be in pros in no time. Let's set our fighting spirits ablaze together. Pokemon have all kinds of attack moves at their disposal and each move has certain qualities that you'll want to use. I am talking about the power, type and category of these moves. Higher power means more damage, especially if your opponent is weak. Heads up new kid, question coming your way. There are two categories that attack moves can fall under. Know what they are? Moves that are light, moves of darkness, physical moves and special moves, moves you love and moves you hate, physical moves and special moves. Awesome, you're just as sharp as I expected, new kid. Looks like you have a handle on the basics. Anyway, attack moves are split into two categories, physical and special. Physical moves do more damage the higher the Pokemon's attack stat is. And special moves do more damage the higher the Pokemon's special attack is. On the other side of things, Pokemon get hit by these moves can take large damage by having High defense or SP defense stat, respectively. In conclusion, Pokemon that are good with physical moves should raise their attack stat, and Pokemon that are good with special moves should raise their special attack stat. Trying to raise both of these stats equally will just make it hard for Pokemon to shine in battle. Make your strong point stronger, I always say. That goes for both people and Pokemon. Oh man, I was just about to suggest that we do some hand-on practice to really drive the point home, but I guess we're out of time. I'll generally meet for my class here in the schoolyard, even with books. Nothing like a little fresh air to make studying more fun, am I right? I suppose, yeah. But class is now over. Take care, you little rascals. Alrighty then. So we've done one of each. So uh, I know I pretty much just go back and I do the other ones as well. So now we're going to go back to Mr. Jacques and complete his biology class. And then we'll go back to Miss Time and do the math class, maths class. And then we'll go back to Dendra and complete Battle Studies Part 2. Now I think in some of these questions I don't get the answer quite right. In fact, I think the maths class I don't get quite right because it's a bit of a trick question. But hey ho, we learnt something new from it anyway. So talking about picnics, you can get them all around the table to make sandwiches and play, it's a really lot of fun. 
you want to learn more about making food, Mr. Seguros or Saguaros or class is the best place to go. Saguaro, I don't know, something like that. Now sometimes while you're enjoying, you may find something very, very important in the basket next to you. This very important thing is what Pokemon are born from. Let's say it together. Boxes, Pokeballs, eggs. Well, Pokemon are born from eggs. So it will be eggs. Phew, you got it right. The very important something I'm talking about is a Pokemon egg. It's not clear where these eggs come from, but they're probably placed in a basket rather stealthily by a Pokemon at the picnic. Walking around with an egg will help warm it and allows it to hatch. Eggs won't warm up by sitting in boxes though, you need to have them in your party. And here's one super important thing I'd say you like to mention with eggs. Pokemons entrust us with their eggs because they believe in us. So I'm sure I sure would be happy seeing you all being responsible parents like your little for your little Pokemon eggs. And whoops, my most important point came right at the bell rang. Well, see you next time, I guess. Alright. That's Biology Class Part 2. So now we're doing maths. The same. This question was a trick question. In hindsight, I should pick option 3. I think pretty sure option 3 is 11. Tell me, do you all enjoy shopping? Buying tasty bread or choosing new clothes, even just a window shopping is so much fun. In today's class, I'd like to use shopping, one of my favourite hobbies, mind you, to teach you all about maths. I'm sure everyone here has visited Pokemart at least once. Pokeballs are one of the many useful items we found here. They cost 200 Pokebucks each. Now then, I'd like you to all do some thinking with me here. One Pokeball is 200, so if you had 2,000 and bought as many Pokeballs as you could afford, how many would you receive? So, I said 10 because that's correct, however... Oh dear, I'm sorry, Clever. I suppose it was a bit of a trick question. With 2,000, you can afford to purchase a maximum of 10 Pokeballs. However, if you purchase 10 Pokeballs or more of any one type of Pokeball, oh, so 10 or more of any one type of Pokeball, you also receive one Premier Ball, a special White Ball, as a bonus. So the correct answer is, in fact, 11. So yeah, so I didn't... As you say, in hindsight, probably should have clicked 11. But there we go, that's that uh, completed as well. So let's see if we've got time for the last one. Looks like we do. So we'll do the battle studies with Ms. Dendra again. Uh, to be honest, I just wanted to get these done out of the way, so we don't have to worry about them. We do have to come, keep going back though, because there'll be more classes unlocked as we go, because there'll be an art class, and then there's food class, or home economics, and there might even be more, I don't know, but there's definitely more to, to return to, so the more story you do, the more classes you unlock, so you come back, you can do them, study some more, and then you get back out, and I'm catching, and then you're back, and do more studying, so it's going to be a lot of back and forth. So, anyway, these crystals are actually collections of ter terrestrial energy that's seeped up out of the ground. You can check out these crystals to battle terror Pokemon with your friends and other trainers in a group of four. We call those battles terror raid battles. Terror Pokemon you'll face off against in terror raid battles are crazy though. They sometimes act differently than regular Pokemon, so you'll need to be on your guard. So yes, terror battles are uh, something quite fun. In a later episode, um, we will actually do that. So the first cheer is go all out. It boosts the attack and special attack of an ally Pokemon. Second is hang tough. This one boosts defense and special defense. And the third, well, let's see if you can guess. Now I really wish it was the middle option. This cheer restores HP. What do you think it is? So it should be one man potion. Really should be. But it's heal up. Or explosive healing wave, that might be fun. But I think Wham Bam Potion would have been better. Wham Bam Potion! Yeah, clearly not. That is heal up. How boring. That's right, maybe I should make you the battle teacher, huh, new kid? The third and final cheer is heal up. 
It's a real powerhouse with the ability to both restore HP and cure status conditions. You can cheer up to three times during a single terror raid battle. Also cheering uses up a turn in battle, so you won't be able to have any of your Pokemon use any of their moves when you cheer. In conclusion, Try everything at your disposal. If nothing seems to be working, try cheering on your allies. Providing support for your team can sometimes open up a new realm of possibilities. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're out of time. Class is over now, take care of you little wrestlers. So yeah, so I think we'll leave that here. Um, so thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. I am sorry for the audio. Um, I think for the next few episodes, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be, but for the next few episodes, there is not going to be any audio. So instead, there will be some background music um, of the old Pokemon games. So if you want to play along and try and figure out which, where the song came from, or which game it came from, or which era it came from, by all means, do leave a comment down below and uh, let me know if you uh, got them all correct. And uh, but yeah, I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next one.